uh, we have some folks in LA as well. Cool, cool. All right, well, looks like uh, looks like we're live. So everybody, welcome to the very first episode of the Out of Home Insider Show. We've got James Heller joining us here from Rapify number three hundred nine on the Inc. Five Hundred, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, James? That that is that is correct. Thanks for having me. Cool. Thanks for joining us. So. I mean, let's learn about you, man. How did you get in out of home? Is this a is this a, a development for you? Did you start in out of home? Did you come from another space? Yeah, that's a great question. I uh, I did not come from out of home. I'm a marketer by trade. I've been fascinated by out of home my whole life. You know, I think just I've always thought big. And when you think of out of home, and when you see an out of home placement, for the most part, they're big. You know, and it, they're hard to ignore. And they make an impact. And I've always been really f- blown away by how lacking uh, it was from a media measurement standpoint early on. And I think the industry has definitely made huge strides in that since, you know, even when we start first started the company to now. And uh, yeah, we've seen Rapify as being a, a, you know, another, another advertising component, another segment in the out of home ecosystem. In fact, we saw the, the Nielsen 2019 uh, out of home industry report. It's the first time I think ever that they covered wrapped vehicles as a, a segment of out of home advertising. And I think a big part of that is, you know, what we've done and also that, you know, that industry segment being created. Sure. So like the idea of a wrapped vehicle, right? It's not anything new. We've seen buses for a long time. We've seen out of home placements on top of taxi cabs. How'd you, how'd you get from that idea to, creating a measurable form of out of home for, for brands like Alaska Airlines, for example, how'd you, how'd, how'd the whole thing come together and making it measurable? Yeah. So, uh, there's a couple, I mean, f- first and foremost, um, you're right. Wrap, ve- wrapping vehicles is not a new thing. Wrapping, wrapping cars and buses and trains and pretty much any, everything, uh, that's been around for a long time. Rapify is the first company to make it a measurable and scalable ad medium. So that's that's the, the first to market advantage that we had. Um, but going back to like why, I want actually this all started with me wanting to use a service similar to this. And uh, I was running a, I was I was running a event that was taking place in San Diego, a pretty big technology event. And I'm like, wow, this is the right at the beginnings of Uber and Lyft and the sharing economy and the gig economy. And I'm like, why isn't there like an advertising component of the gig economy? And, and how cool would it be for me to just draw a polygon on a map, t- select how many vehicles, upload artwork, swipe a credit card, get, get out of home deployed, and then be able to have a dashboard like a Google analytics style dashboard where I could log in and see the performance metrics around that campaign. Like why, why doesn't this exist? And then we looked and all of the parts for the most part were on the table, you know, but nobody's really assembled them. And so I think part of like why, the, why Rapify started is a, like my whole career has been spent using all these pieces for different digital channels. Um, and then also just the advent of the gig economy and, you know, the adoption of iPhone and, mobile devices and the amount of ways we could pull uh, location data and we could track an, an audience exposure and being able to put all that stuff in a really intuitive platform that allows brands to scale this type of advertising nationwide is something that you know has evolved over the course of the last five years. Sure. I love the idea of leveraging what's already there, right? You, you mentioned the gig economy. So this, in a lot of ways, is that just who you're targeting for drivers? Is it primarily Uber drivers, Lyft, DoorDash? Is it that sort of thing? Or can other people get involved too? Like I, I commute a lot for work. Yeah, but all of the above. Uh, we actually started off just for just being a means to monetize your commute. Uh, today, about 30% of our driver base are rideshare gig economy drivers. Uh, you know, for those types of platforms, as well as regular everyday commuters that want to monetize their time on the road. About 200,000 drivers have either downloaded the Rapify app or awaiting campaigns or active on active campaigns. And that number grows organically by a few hundred a day. Um, And then on the brand side, 
you know, we started off and we came out of Jason Calacanis's launch incubator. For those who don't know who he is, he's one of the most prolific uh, investors on the planet. He was one of the first investors in Uber. He's made one of the most legendary uh, returns on a angel investment like ever because of that and several others. So he's been really good at picking winners and he picked us, which is awesome. So we went through his launch incubator. We came out of that. Uh, we patented a method for measuring a moving out of home object. We did that in 2016. 2017, I was the feature honoree for the Forbes 30 under 30 for marketing and advertising. Uh, we That was a wild year. We had a, our first near-death experience. We tried executing a sales strategy that didn't really work. Uh, had to kind of go back to the drawing board on how to sell this. Um, and also just further pushing industry adoption. Breaking into this market and in this industry is not trivial and and it's uh it's definitely one where you've got to put in the work to be a part of it and you know what's really cool about it is uh you know 2019 we've got a lot more industry acceptance the out of home industry is starting to really embrace us cuz we're adding to the pie you know out of home advertising is a 9 billion ish market in the US and we're not really pulling from that cuz the brands that leverage us they're not they're not going, oh, we're going to buy Rapify instead of billboards or instead of these other things. No, like what we do complements all that. We increase the reach and frequency for all the traditional stuff and we help bridge the gap between that traditional uh, media and, and digital. So when you look at kind of how we're positioned and also how we complement traditional out of home and, and transit and, and digital and all those things, uh, it makes a lot of sense. But I think going back to like where we're at today and, and, and how long it's taken to get into it. I mean, I'm also now in the, uh, the OAAA Innovations Committee. So I'm actually helping drive innovation for out of home in general, uh, which is great. And, and that's something that really excites me because I think this is a really cool industry. And I think it, it, should be, it should be a 20 plus billion dollar industry in the U.S. And I think the only way we get there is by embrace, embracing media measurement, embracing uh, attribution and and us coming together and creating a platform to, to make it so that we can measure this and have standards for measuring it so if we don't do it somebody else is gonna do it and uh, and I, I want to make sure that you know the folks in the industry have or at least do what we, what we can to, to help grow that pie I think it's a great point that you're bringing up about adding to the total available market of out of home and that you saw this radical uh, almost over dedication to all things digital and it created this bubble and you see that reversion now coming big brands. You see some of the brands featured there behind you is big brands that have always focused on top of funnel, maybe betrayed it for a little bit because digital was the hot thing. And now everyone coming back to out of home. Uh, so it, it is, it's an exciting time, exciting opportunity You talked a little bit about the challenges of breaking into the space is there anybody else out there doing what you do? And if they're doing something similar, like who are your competitors in the space? That's a great question. I mean, go early to your earlier statement about uh, top of funnel. You kind of you kind of just touched on it. I think part of what Rapify, what makes Rapify really special is we're no longer top of the funnel brand marketing. We're now like upper mid funnel and we're starting to see out of home move more further down the funnel because of our ability now to attribute what that out of home exposure actually did in terms of driving a conversion. And, and so that is what's going to make out of home grow, right? The biggest gripe that marketers have had about out of home has been, it's really hard to measure. You know, we know it works, we know it does something, but we don't know how well or how much. So it's really hard for us to put a bunch of, you know, ad dollars into it, unless you're a huge, huge brand that has a, a dedicated top of funnel brand marketing budget. So, you know, I think that's part of it. Going back to competition, we don't really have any direct competition today. There are other folks in the space that, 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 that are emerging and we're starting to see a competitive landscape. There's several folks that are putting digital taxi tops on rideshare vehicles now. There's, uh, there's other folks that wrap cars, but we don't, we don't sell wrapped cars. Wrapping vehicles is how we deliver the out-of-home impression, uh, but what we're delivering is a really measurable way of being able to drive really high recall first touch and then have that trigger retargeting across a bunch of different channels and then at the end result being 
a measured conversion. And that's how, and that's why brands love Rapify. And that's why, that's how we sell. So like if you, if you were to sit in a sales presentation with Rapify, we're not talking about wrapping cars that much. Makes sense. In terms of the retargeting and the other components that come into the campaign, is that all managed through Rapify or do brands do that internally? Do they retain their agency? Can it be any one of those? Yeah. So it could be, it depends on the size of the brand. It depends on what agency we're working with. Uh, so there's, it varies. Uh, we can do all of that. We could, we could push all the retargeting through our DSP. We're now integrated with the trade desk. Uh, we have really awesome integration with them. We can push audience straight into the brand's DSP. We have other ways of being able to push audience through like things like the live ramp. Um, but yeah, it really depends on the brand and what they want to do. But typically, uh, they're handing us, they're giving us the assets that we use to build out all the out of home creative and then also all the assets for retargeting across mobile display, connected TV, audio streaming, and native. So a brand doesn't necessarily have to disrupt their process. They can adopt you and, and weave you right into their process. Or if they wanted to transition everything over and keep it sort of turnkey, they could do that too. Exactly. Like if, the, if a brand is a, a big, you know, global fortune 50 and they have a massive digital team sure. and they want to just use the audience that was exposed to Rapify to segment their own retargeting, that's something they could absolutely do. And, and, and we love, we love that because that means that they're able to take the exposure audience and their first party data and make sure it's, they're, they're hitting the right audience with the right message, right? You don't want to hit, you don't want to hit somebody who's already a loyal, um, you know, brand, a, a brand proponent or, you know, client, or customer with a, a, you know, learn more about this thing that you already have been using for 10 years, right? So I think that's, that's where out of home is becoming a lot more intelligent. Like we're now able to use that first touch or uh, that, you know, that re reaffirmation of the brand for different things. Because now we can take the exposure audience and go, okay, well here, let's retarget the audience we know are not clients or customers with a, you know, here's more education. Whereas, Maybe you're an existing brand that just isn't buying or an existing customer, but you're not buying at the frequency they want you to buy. Um, or you're not aware of a new feature and like there's a new feature that you haven't used yet because, and they know this. And now it's a, an, a, an opportunity for them to retarget you because now that brand's top of, top of mind. Sure. So. And is it exclusive to just big brands or if I'm a, if I'm a smaller regional type business, could Rapify make sense for me too? Uh, we do have lower cost options and we're actually gonna be launching a product that really caters to the SMB lower mid market uh, later this year. Um, but we, uh, we also, you know, typical brands are in that kind of upper mid market to enterprise on our platform just because okay. it's really hard for a local brand to be able to to, to be able to budget for something like this. Makes sense, makes sense. So ideally, it's, it's really some of the big brands that we've seen, Pepsi-Cola, Alaska Airlines. The Alaska Airlines case study really stands out to me because um, we, we work with a regional airline where I'm at in Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, well, a regional airport rather. How were you able to track, because it was San Francisco to Hawaii, I believe was the route, is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay, how, how are we able to wrap a car in this brilliant piece of creative? We've talked about some of the things that we're able to do from the retargeting side. How, how are we able to say, hey, this definitely, John, you wanna say hi, James? <laughs> How's it going? John, you say, what's up, man? <laughs> you like billboards, right? <laughs> he's doing cool stuff, man. Look, he's got the MLB right there. I think he's got some for the Mets. You worked with the Mets, right? So we haven't worked with the Mets yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, we work right. with the Padres. The Padres. The Padres. You know the Padres. Um, yeah, I'm a trade. The Alaska Airlines, the case I sp for a specific route. I mean, that's that's pretty neat to be able to take that and be able to measure it. Yeah, I think so. There's there's a, there's a couple of reasons for why, right? So there's there's a bunch of different use cases for travel, and I think one of them is. You know, if they have a, a specific flight route that's maybe underserved, they need to put they they at, they literally need to put butts in seats. Yeah, you know, which is awesome. Which is like what out of home helps. What out of advertising in general at a very high level is what it does. Um, 
So when you look at what Alaska did there, I thought it was really interesting because they're using, using this as a way to, to raise awareness for that flight route. And you also have, you, you, you might have a, a little bit it's of an not, explosion. It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> You're just pulling the pin for this. Uh, Stop it, Bob. Um, so there's, there's also not only creating that consideration and awareness, but now able to retarget the audience exposed with, you know, multi-channel retargeting across a bunch of different channels. Uh, and then we're able to, you know, pixel the the a conversion page like like the the shopping cart, you know, the end of the 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 buying funnel, the marketing right. funnel, where we're able to get to that, you know, that checkout success page where they bought a ticket, and we're able to pixel it. So, you know, it's a it's a really interesting use case. Travel is is an industry that is now starting to leverage Rapify. We've run campaigns for. Um, Alaska Airlines, we ran a campaign or a couple campaigns now for Cheapo Air, which is Fair Portal, one of the largest uh, travel websites on the planet now. And then we have, um, we currently have a campaign on the road for this really cool platform called Trip Actions, which is a, a B2B tech platform for measure, for doing uh, corporate travel. So they, they, they actually took a page out of another, actually probably our largest use case, which is B2B tech today. Make, makes up a big, big chunk of our revenue. And uh, they basically combine the out of the, the travel and the B2B tech use cases uh, in a really unique way. In fact, the platform we're using right now for this podcast is one of our largest clients, Zoom Video Communications. So it's, it's, a really, uh, you know, it's a really amazing combination of two amazing use cases. That's cool. And James, you're gonna be out here on the East Coast next week and that's gonna be, uh... For anybody watching this recording, that's going to be the 13th through the 19th? Uh, yeah, I'll be out there. I'm, I'm in New York the 16th and 17th, and there's I might be in Boston on the 18th. So we're still trying to figure out what's happened there. Otherwise, yeah, the 16th and 17th are the two uh, main days that I'm in, in, uh, in New York. So a great opportunity for any brands catching this. Maybe uh, just in time for James to be out here, but you're back and forth often, right? You've got an yeah, I'm out, I'm out there at least one week out of the month. So constantly accessible. He was gracious enough to make some time out here. I know it's the end of a, a end of a week there. It's uh, eight o'clock here. Looks like I got an impatient little six year old who's ready to probably go uh, relax a little bit. But James, how can people connect with you? Obviously, Rapify.com. John, you got to hang out for five seconds, bro. Five seconds. We sure are. <laughs> this is what happens when you record podcasts on a Friday night, man. It's what happens. You're man. supposed to be playing. <laughs> um, yeah, Friday night SmackDown. Go maybe the yeah. WWE. They're on the East Coast. That'd be yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's actually my what I want to do after Rapify. Uh, be wrestler. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely that's like the next the next goal. Um, no, I, I, the best way to get a hold of me is LinkedIn and, uh, and, uh, Twitter. So I'm at, at James Heller on Twitter. Uh, if you find me on LinkedIn, that's where I'm pretty active on there. That's how we got initially connected. So, uh, and then also just, if you, if you want to reach out to me, uh, on Rapify, just go to our website. There's a contact form. You could reach me there as well. Cool. Awesome. Well, James, we'll continue to stay in touch. We're going to watch what you're doing. Thanks for taking the time out here this evening, man. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, next time, I'll only send one Zoom meeting link. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. It was great, great being on the show. Thanks. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Already. John, you say say bye. bye. He's out. <laughs> we'll see you later, man. See ya. See ya.